over here, and I thought, man, who's on fire over here? I looked over, and there's Big Mo. I said, I'll say this. I don't know how it's going to turn out. don't know how great it will be, but I want you to listen with your spirit and not your ears. I want you to hear the message and not just what I'm saying, okay? And I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to read the whole chapter, chapter 5. There's 14 verses. Be ye therefore followers of God. There's the key. Be a follower of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness, covetousness, let it not be once named among you. As becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable under the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things are reproved, are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. And give Christ, and Christ shall give thee light. You may be seated. Now, the reason I prayed that prayer this morning, I'm just going to be completely transparent. In 2002, Old Central, I got up to preach. And a man was there I had never met. His name was Steve Morgan. And I preached this sermon 22 years ago. It's the first sermon you ever heard me preach. You probably, I know you have forgotten it. And the way I know that is because I looked at my sermons and I always put down when I preached them and where I preached them. And I said, Taylor's dad was here this morning. I always put a little note. And I was thinking about him, and I said, Lord, I, you know, if this is what you want, and he's here. And what was true 22 years ago is even more true today than it ever has been. Because in those 22 years, we've seen things happen. We've seen things go, come. We've seen things uh, uh, dissipate. We've seen things get better. We've seen things get worse. But I'm telling you, overall, it's getting worse and worse and worse, the world's getting darker. A few years ago, I went to a minister's meeting. It was at a Chinese restaurant. I, I, I came in off the street, and when I came in, there was a petitioned off room that we, they set us in. And as I sat down, I realized it was a very dark room. It was so dark, I couldn't hardly see anything. And as I sat there, I made the, uh, the, the comment to the guys when I walked in, and I saw some of the guys there. Some walked in with me. Some were sitting there already. And I looked around. I said, are, do they, are they serving drinks in here? As a joke, because it felt like a nightclub. It was so dark. Been in some churches, it's got that dark, too. <laughs> 
But, but, but I, I, I sat there, and I, I'm naturally suspicious of Chinese food anyway. And uh, that day, I, I ate by faith and not by sight because I couldn't see my meal. But you know what? I noticed something. The longer I sat in that room and the more conversation that I made, my eyes began to get adjusted to the dark. And I realized something. I could see things that I couldn't see when I first walked in here, but now I can see them because my eyes had got adjusted. There wasn't more light in the room. It's just that my eyes got adjusted to the room. And I made the comment to the guys that were standing there. I said, you know what? Isn't it crazy how our eyes get adjusted to the dark? And then I said, that's exactly what's going on in the church world. Uh, We're getting used to the dark. We live and labor on this mistaken notion that the world's getting better. It's getting brighter. That things are better, but it's not. It's not. The world's getting darker and darker and darker. And if you sit in a dark room long enough, you'll begin to look around and see things you didn't see. You'll imagine and think that light is breaking in, that it is getting better. Church, I want you to know we've sat in darkness so long that as we continue to sit in that darkness, we begin to think it's getting better and better and better. But I come to tell you that's not the case. The case is that we are getting used to the dark. Things that used to be sins, not sin anymore. Things that used to be wrong are not wrong anymore and I'm going to get to that Uh, but the truth is uh, it's not getting brighter out there but can I just add this as I always say uh, it's getting gloriously dark outside Uh, and if you think the world's just going to get better we get the right politicians in there we get the right people in there we get the right congress in there we get the right senate in there and I'm for all of that for our children's sake All right, Uh, but when I look at the big picture I can tell you uh, it's not going to get any better it may be a little reprieve now and then and it may get better for for us in America now and then, uh, but when you look at sin and darkness, uh, it's getting darker and darker and darker on this planet. Uh, and that only tells me one thing it's getting gloriously dark out there. Uh, and in just a little while, the light is going to shine. Uh, that's the good news of the gospel. Uh, it does not matter how dark it gets, uh, it does not matter how much sin is, is, is upon the face of the earth. Uh, the Bible said, uh, Where sin doth abound, the grace of God does much more abound. Uh, what's that tell me light is greater than darkness uh, and grace is greater than sin uh, and one of these days he's going to shine the light uh, and when he does we're going to leave this planet uh, we're going to evacuate this place with our absence uh, and we shall forever and ever be with the Lord Uh, but the news of the day is uh, don't get used to the dark don't get used to the dark we're in a dark world out here this world is so dark church it's darker than it's ever been you know it's dark. You know it's dark. When we are more concerned about dying wills than we are butchering children. Hell, amen. You know it's dark when adultery is no longer sin in Hollywood, and we know that, but it's no longer sin in a lot of churches either. Fornication, adultery, living together, all the other stuff that goes with it, it's just getting dark. You know, it's dark when homosexuals and lesbians and transgenders are marching in streets that they, that they, 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 they give them the main street and they block off everything else and they let them walk down those streets, most of them half naked. I hope you've never seen those things on TV. They don't show a lot of it, but I've seen some of the footage and it's unbelievable. It's an abomination. So they go, and here's the problem. They're trying to shove it down our children's throats. They're trying to make it the norm of the day. Uh, And you know it's getting dark uh, when they try to do it in our own public school system. There's so much uh, up in the air about our public school system. Our public school system stinks, okay? Uh, Begin with, uh, they teach evolution, which is a lie. Uh, And we didn't come from animals. We didn't come from apes. We didn't come from tadpoles. Uh, We came from the God of heaven. Uh, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, And anything other than that is an abomination. And that will start right there. And all the other things that they teach. You know it's getting real dark when all the church is concerned about is wealth, health, and self instead of righteousness and holiness and truth and and, and heaven and the coming of the Lord. I'll tell you what the problem is. We've allowed the world to desensitize us. They desensitize us to evil. And we've been desensitized to evil. And we live in a world that calls evil good and good evil. What we're doing this morning, what I, how I'm preaching would be called hate speech. And one day I may get arrested for it, but so be it. I was willing to get arrested to wear one of them stupid masks. And if I'm going to do that, you know I'm going to get arrested for preaching the gospel. Glory to God. 
But the truth is that we've been desensitized. The church has become so seeker friendly uh, and we don't even want to offend the devil nowadays. <laughs> we, we, we just, you know, we want to be nice to everybody. Where does it say in the Bible that we're supposed to be nice, okay? We think that's the 11th commandment or something. Thou shalt be nice. Uh, let me tell you, some people are dying without Jesus Christ and they're going to a devil's hell uh, and they'll be there for eternity. There'll be no furloughs. There'll be no going homes. Uh, there'll be no Christmas vacations. Uh, no, sir, when they go there, they go there. When they die in their sins... Uh, and Jesus said, if you die in your sin, uh, then you will die and you will, and it will be judgment from then on out. Uh, and it's not just a little time. It's forever and forever and forever. And when I think about that, something stirs down deep inside of me. Uh, I walk by people every day. I talk to people every day that are headed for eternity. Uh, and I try to preach to, like a dying man to dying people uh, because we're all going to die and face the judgment of God. Uh, and there's only one way to face it, uh, and that's with the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. That's the only way that we can get there. That's why I preach like I preach because I know my time is limited and I know time is running out. I say it's time to offend the devil and not only offend him, it's time we kick him in his hinder parts and tell him get out, cast the devil out. And you know the only way to cast the devil out, you got to shed the light. The only way to cast the darkness out of a room, you got to turn the light on. And we got to turn the light on. We got to turn the light on with our lives, with our with our faith. But most of all, turn the light on with the word of God. Satan, it is written. It is written. The only thing that dispels the darkness is the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why I don't spend a lot of time preaching about prosperity and all that other stuff. Uh, what good is prosperity when people die and go to hell? Uh, there's no prosperity in hell. Uh, there's no riches in hell. Uh, he said if you gained the whole, uh, whole world and lost your soul, you've lost everything. Uh, I'm trying to reach people for the, with the gospel uh, because the God I know uh, said there's coming a judgment one day. One day there'll be a judgment. And you see we, we, don't, we don't see that too much anymore in the church. We're just getting darker. The Bible said the world lieth in darkness. Gross darkness covereth the earth. And in the closing hours of this dispensation, people have, have, have or they're dominated. People are dominated by the prince of air. Dominated by darkness. Men love darkness rather than light, Jesus said. Why? Because their deeds are evil. The night is far spent. The, bl the blackness deepens just as before the dawn. Uh, but what bothers me the most is not so much that I can see it in the world. Everybody sees it in the world. I mean, any church member can see that in the world. The problem is that we've de been desensitized to it. We don't think it's that evil anymore. We don't think it's that wrong anymore. We don't think, you know, uh, too much about holiness anymore. Uh, we just say, you know, well, God saved us, and that's all there is. Uh, no, that's not all there is. Uh, we've been saved by by grace and the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust uh, and I just read you the scripture out of the book of Ephesians uh, he said flee the darkness uh, get out of the darkness we're not children of the darkness anymore uh, we are children of light uh, we walk in the light as he is in the light uh, and we know the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin uh, but we gotta walk in the light uh, and if we walk in the light then he cleanses us Amen. bothers me is we can't see it in the church. Yeah. See, some people say, well, preacher, I used to have some convictions in my life, but, you know, it doesn't convict me anymore. Let me tell you something. If God ever convicted, if it's a God-given conviction, it's God-given, okay? Now, I know some things were pushed on us at times. Some things we believed because everybody said that was wrong and we didn't get any Bible on it. I get that. I understand that. We, You know, we all used to do things we didn't do because, you know, they said you had to do it. And when we forgot in the Word, we found it wasn't there. But if it's in the Word and the Spirit of God convicts us, then what makes us think that God changed His mind? What makes us think that everything's changed? Uh, you say, well, you know, I got more light on the subject, Pastor. No, you didn't get more light on the subject. You're walking in the darkness. Uh, you don't even recognize it. Uh, you, you, we want to run with the hare and hunt with the hounds, uh, and we wonder why there's such a fallenness in the church, such a sinful act going on in the church. Uh, we look at all these preachers that have fallen down there in Dallas. We say, oh, man, it's horrible. Uh, let me tell you, they've been falling for a long time. Uh, it's not that you just saw them hit the ground. Uh, no, they've been falling. We just saw it happen, uh, and what happened was was there's darkness in the church uh, they say well you know we let the homosexuals in uh, and, and they're going to make the church dark no the, the homosexual comes in the church uh, and he doesn't make the church dark he comes in the church because the church is dark all right uh, and if we applaud that and we celebrate that uh, and we fly our little rainbow flag uh, and we want to love everybody uh, let me tell you we love everybody 
but we don't love sin. We ought to hate everything God hates. We ought to love everything God loves. And he said those things are an abomination. We brought it into the church, and we call it God, but it's not God. It's compromise. Amen. Well, God gave me a convenience, but why'd you let the devil talk you out of it? Are you listening to me? Turn your hearing aid up a little bit, okay? Listen to me. God did not save you, sanctify you, fill you with the Holy Ghost, or you to peacefully coexist with the darkness of this world. God called us to break it off, to break fellowship. He said, break fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Uh, you got to recognize the darkness and realize what it is. Uh, there's such, there's in progress right now, even as we sit in a comfortable pew, a slow, subtle, sinister brainwashing process uh, that is gradually desensitizing us to evil. Uh, little by little, sin is made to appear a little less sinful uh, until the light within us becomes dark. That's what he said. Uh, there's been such a flood tide of pornography, not just in the world, but in the church. Uh, they say 75% of the men in our in our churches today look at pornography on their phones and their computers. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, you wonder why there's not a revival? Uh, you wonder why there's not a move of God? Uh, you wonder why people are not flooding the altars to get saved? Uh, because we're allowing those things to come in uh, and we've gotten used to it now. We listen to foul, foul language. We don't think nothing of it. Now, I know when you work on a job and you're going to hear it. Man, I hear it every single day. Every now and then somebody says, oh, I'm sorry. Don't mean to offend you. I say, you don't offend me, but you better talk to God about that. <laughs> I tell him that. You don't, it's not about me. It's about God. But, man, we get used to it until we watch it on TV all the time. We don't think nothing when they use those words anymore. Uh, I wish they wouldn't say that. Well, I do too, but I wish you wouldn't be listening to it. <laughs> well, we hear it in the world. Yeah, but they didn't say you had to bring it in your house. Amen, amen, amen. I knew this wasn't going to go nowhere. Thank you for being here, Steve. Amen. Never lift up an inward protest. Never lift up an outward protest. You know, talk about abortion. I mean, we ought to be the... How in the world could we even dream of putting candidates up that believe in murdering and torturing and lip, ripping limbs off of babies? Did you notice everybody that believes in abortion are already been, have already been born? Did you notice that? Put them back in the womb, and I promise you that doctor goes to tear their head off and crush their skull. They said, no, 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 I don't believe in abortion. Once you got free, you do, because you're controlled by the devil. But the sad thing about it, it's in the church. People wonder, well, I don't know. A woman should have a right to her own body, yeah? It's called do not commit adultery. There's your control, my friend. <laughs> not going to go there this morning. Television is probably the greatest tool the devil used in the 20th century to get us used to the dark. We sit year after year after year watching things, listening to language that we wouldn't have put up with, you know, just... 20 years before that. Hello. And, and, and the church gets worse every year. Sin used to shock us, but today it amazes us. What used to um, uh, um, um, amaze us now amuses us. We ought not to laugh at those filthy jokes. They start talking about that stuff on your job. Walk away. Don't laugh with them. Separate yourself from the unfruitful works of darkness. But we've grown accustomed to strong language. People are doing it in the pulpit nowadays. I've listened to preachers on the Internet say words, and, oh, we're just trying to be relevant. You're, 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 you got used to the dark, man. And somebody right here in this church tell me, he, he says something right down the hallway, and I stopped him. And I said, whoa, we don't talk like that in this church. Well, preacher, it's really not cussing and it's just words. And I said, I don't even want to hear it. I said, end the conversation. I, I said, I'm not here to debate it with you. I'm here to tell you, you don't talk like that in this church. Hello? <laughs> I'm just telling you. 
I'm a nice guy, but I can just take so much. We've grown accustomed to it. Sex scenes are normal sights in most of our houses today. Lesbianism, homosexuality doesn't seem that bad anymore. Just accepted. It's just an accepted alternate way of life, preacher. And, and I'm not throwing stones as, at the person. I know some people like that. And I like them as people. I really do. But you know what? That doesn't change the word of God any. Just because I like the people, just because it says here it's an abomination, doesn't change anywhere. You say, well, it's just an alternate way of lifestyle. Let me tell you somebody that hasn't accepted it as a, 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 another way a, Another way of lifestyle, okay, if I'm saying that right, uh, an alternate way of lifestyle. And let me tell you, somebody hadn't changed their mind on it. His name is Jesus Christ. His eyes are a flame of fire. His voice are a sound of many waters. Uh, and when his voice thunders out, uh, it thunders out with a sonic boom, and it says, repent uh, of your backslidings, or, and, or, or I'll come, uh, and I'll remove the candlestick out of your church. Uh, I'll move the, that, that little light you do have. I'll take it out. Uh, the little light that I, I've given you, uh, you can sit and watch Watch that trash so long till pretty soon it ain't trash anymore. Uh, well, it ain't that bad, preacher. Uh, well, I want you to ask you something. What happened to your prayer life? Uh, what happened to the times you got down with your Bible and turned everything off uh, and said, God, speak to me in this word? Uh, no, it, it, it's not all that bad. But what about your life? Where is it going today? Oh, my word. You see why I was struggling? My wife's not here to start my car so I can get out of here. I'll throw you my keys, Brother Steve. We get out of here together. We're kind of like that Irishman. Came over here, immigrated over here, and about a couple years later, his, his, his brother came over, and, uh, and, and his brother's listening. He said, man, I said, uh, they sure do talk funny over here. He said, you think they talk funny now? You should have heard them when I first got here. Two years ago. Now, you got to do a little thinking on that. He got accustomed to it. Maybe you know somebody like had a real Texas or Louisiana accent, but the longer you're with them, you don't even you don't even know it. You got desensitized to it. Hello. Huh. The, the, the Bible says that Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom. But it didn't stop there. He gradually moved inside the gate. He, he eventually got on the council. He eventually, the Bible said, his soul was vexed daily by the sins of the Sodomites. But his light went out. He lost his influence. He lost his family just about. His wife backslid. She turned into a pillar of salt because she looked back. And they had to flee for their lives. And, and you can read it. He died in disgrace. Let me tell you something. It's because he got used to it. He just let it gradually get a hold of him. Well, I'm just telling you, church, you got to hear this every now and then to shake us back to reality that the king is coming and it's getting dark out there and we need light. If anything we need to do in this world is turn the light light on. Uh, not tell people that how good they are, uh, but we need to tell people how wrong we are uh, not by not serving God and serving idols. Uh, that's what we do in America. We feel in churches, but we serve our idols. Uh, we need to burn the idols. And may I say it again, uh, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face uh, and turn from their wicked ways, then I'd forgive their sin heal their, and heal their land. Uh, you got to turn from those ways. Uh, are the things in your life that you're holding on to? Are the things in your life that you want won't let go. Uh, why don't you let it go and let God touch your life? Uh, I can promise you he the son says free is surely free indeed. Uh, and if there's ever going to be any hope in this world, uh, it's going to be because in pulpits all across America, men and women get up and preach this gospel uh, and tell people that we're headed for a judgment uh, that the light is not going out uh, and we need to get to where we need to be. That's what's going to take. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, so it shall be in the coming of the Son of Man. Brother, we're living in those days. We've, we've got modern-day lots telling us, well, it, it's better to hobnob with the Sodomites than to live separate from them. And we've become victims of our own compromise. The Bible said, what communion has light with darkness? 
tell you what we've done. We, 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 we figured out nine or ten sins that we don't like, and then, you know, what we do is we, we say that's sin, but we let the rest of it go. We, we just, we, you know, we, we have a wretched habit of tolerating sin in our own life. And I'm, I'm telling you, that's something all of us are guilty of. Huh? Let me tell you something. It's very easy for me to see sin in your life, but it's hard sometimes to see it in my own life. Huh? It's hard to put my, I can put my finger on your sin, but what about when it comes to my sin a little bit harder? We justify. We're the world's greatest justifier. We justify everything we do. I'm saying we need to get flat-footed on the Word of God and read it and obey it and walk after God, follow after God. You see, the Holy Ghost is trying to convict us of those things. How can He convict us of those things if we don't think they're wrong anymore? I can tell you this. What keeps the church half dead, I'm talking about worldwide, is the fact that we let the idols get in. We need to repent thoroughly and completely and let the Holy Ghost turn the searchlight on in our spirits and the devil's ideas and the devil's moral standard and the devil's mental uh, uh, attitude uh, has got to be repented of, uh, has got to be put where it needs to be put. Uh, we accept most things anymore. There's nothing but the world, uh, and he let it, but we let it come into the church. <sighs> Men like David Wilkerson used to preach and God called him home. <sighs> they used to preach and they said he's crazy. You ought to listen to some of his sermons today. They touch us no more today than they were then. They're more up to date now than they were 20, 30 years ago. Huh. The problem is with the church, and I don't just lay it on the laity. I lay it on the preachers. I lay it on the preachers. I was in another church meeting with a bunch of preachers, and they had a comedian get up there, and, and they're going to entertain all of us preachers. I like comedians. You know that. But not to substitute it for the Word of God. It has its place. I'm not saying it. But here's my problem. It wasn't that he was a comedian. The problem was he said some bad words right there in the pulpit. And that's not even what bothered me. What bothered me was when he said them, I looked at all the preachers, and they were on the ground beating the ground. It was, they thought it was so funny. I said, the problem's not with the laity. The problem with most of us with the preachers. Hello. What used to be dark is not dark anymore. We'd rather have fellowship with darkness. We make light of God and, and, and conviction sometimes. We're living, someone says, in an enlightened age, preacher. We just don't see it anymore. Problem is, it's there. Instead of our churches being cities set on a hill that cannot be hid, we've turned them into just caves and caverns. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, you've made my father's house a den of thieves. A den is a dark, desperate, damp, dank place, if you please. And he said, you've made it a den of thieves right in the church, down underneath the hill, completely hid from everything. That's where the cave is. That's where the den is. But we're not supposed to be down there underneath the hill. We're supposed to be on top of the hill preaching the gospel and shining the light and turning the light on. Uh, you see, men are hiding. They hide in those dens. Uh, and that's the saddest part about it. Uh, it's not so much they're hiding in bars anymore and hiding in the dives anymore, uh, but a lot of folks are hiding right there in the church. Uh, they come to church. They lift hands. They sing the songs. They say amen to the preacher. Uh, they pay some tithe. Uh, they do all this, uh, but they leave out and do the same things that they've been doing for years and think nothing of it. Uh, it's one thing to wrestle with sin, uh, but it's another thing to condone sin. Uh, and as long as we're condoning sin we're never ever going to get the touch of God on our lives amen you see we just we just you know we just don't want to be offensive preacher hmm. don't want to be offensive we'd rather grieve the Holy Spirit than offend somebody <laughs> Jesus said if the blind lead the blind they're both going to fall in the ditch and if a preacher don't preach against sin <laughs> and lives like and doesn't live what he preaches, he ain't worth the effort to take him to take to take him out and throw him out on his head. <laughs> Hello. Watch it, preacher. You know those preachers are falling. Now, I know that. <laughs> but you know what? The problem was not that that they that they were preachers. The problem is that they allowed these things to happen in their life. I wonder why how did that happen? A little by little. Day by day. A little compromise here, a little compromise there. The Bible said that the, 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 the foxes spoil the vine. It's the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the little things in your life. Now, I know this is coming off as uncompassionate this morning. 
But turn around and look at somebody and say, I, I love my pastor. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, as I've always said, if I've said anything in this sermon to offend you, anything, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I don't care. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I don't care. I don't want to offend God. I ain't afraid of you, but I'm afraid of him. I have a fear of God. You see, most people don't want a church where the word is preached. What they call the word is telling you how to prosper, be in good health, and tell you how to tell you how to you know have a bigger house and drive a fancier car. I heard one just, and I I listen to little snippets just to see what's going on out there. And one guy got up and said, "Don't you know Jesus was rich?" To justify his plane, so he could fly around the world. He's not flying around the world to preach the gospel. He's flying around the world to preach his gospel, so he can get richer and you can be poor. All right. But he said Jesus was rich. I said, "Many not reading the same Bible I'm reading." He said, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of God doesn't have a place to lay his head. But then I heard the guy from Tulsa, I'll tell you who, well, I done said it, didn't I? The guy from Tulsa, he's gone on to be, meet his reward. He said that Jesus had a big house. I said, that's not what he said. He said Jesus was rich because he had a treasurer. And they took all this money up in the ministry. And he tried to liken his ministry to, to Jesus' ministry. But the problem is Jesus came preaching the gospel. He laid the, the axe at the root of the tree. Uh, he called him a bunch of vipers. He told him that the judgment was coming. Uh, he told him you must be born again. Uh, he told him if you die in your sins, you go to hell. Uh, and whosoever is not written in the Lamb's book of life shall be cast out to the lake of fire forever and forever. That's the things Jesus preached. Uh, and if you want to preach what Jesus preached, you better start preaching the word of God uh, because that's what he preached uh, and the Bible says uh, that men love darkness rather than light John 3 20 says for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light neither cometh to the light lest the deeds should be his deeds should be reproved I read it this morning Ephesians chapter 5 and 11 have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them if you're mad at me I'm just doing what God told me to do I'm reproving them. I'm telling you. It's our business as Christians to let our light shine. And that doesn't mean just show up down at the, you know, the gospel rescue mission and feed somebody. All right? That means to stand up when there's a bunch of guys at your job and they're talking, and they're talking stuff that they shouldn't be talking about. And you, you shine the light. Well, they won't like me up there. Well, they probably don't like you anyway. All right. Probably don't like you anyway. Ye are the light of the world, Jesus said. That light reproves the darkness. Don't get discouraged if everybody doesn't receive you. Don't get discouraged if, if, if you know, you, you're on the outside looking in. Because he said, reproving, exposing is, is more than just denou is denouncing them. It, 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 it's, it's that you... That you, you live it. You live it in front of them. <sighs> Better come back, Sister Julie. See, you let a preacher turn on the light and people squirm. People live in darkness all week long. I heard the guy down in Houston say, with a big toothy grin, I don't preach against sin. They know their sins. No, they don't. Not if you're telling them they're okay. Have your best life now. I got news for you. You have your best life now. You're going to hell. Because it ain't going to be your best life now. He never promised prosperity. He never promised that we'd be rich. He never promised us that we'd be, you know, the, the, all these things that we want to be. But he promised us we'd have persecution. Why? Because men don't want the truth. Men don't want the truth. And the sad thing is a lot of people in the church don't want the truth anymore. 
when you got a mega church with tens of thousands of people there and you've been caught molesting children and you get up and say, well, you know what, I'm a human being and, and the Lord's, you know, I just repented and the whole church erupts in applause. Something tells me that's demonic. We've let darkness rule. You know what? There's a thing called photo or photophobia. They won't come to the light because their sins will be manifest, Jesus said, and it's called photophobia. You know what that is? That's the fear of light. There's some folks that they're afraid of the light. Spiritually, there's a lot of people afraid of the light. And, and, and you know, if you are out in the field and you turn a stone over, man, those little creatures and critters and crawling things, man, they'll scurry. They don't mind being under the rock. They don't mind being unexposed. Lift the rock up, let the light shine in, and they run. Anybody that's ever known anything about roaches knows that. You ever hunt them rascals? You can spray them, fog them. But if you just reach up and turn, cut the light on, guess what? They'll hunt the cracks. <laughs> I know that didn't get real. I'm not just saying. Say, I've been to your house. I ain't talking about my house. <laughs> but seriously, turn the light on, and man, they get to scurry. And turn the light on in a dark cellar and watch the snakes and the toads and the lizards and the mice and the rodents and the roaches. Man, they'll look to find a place to get out of there. Why? Because they're so used to the darkness. So used to the darkness. You let a preacher preach, people hunt for cracks to get out of too. Well, I ain't going back to that church. I can't help it. I know God's coming back. Amen. And that's the only one I'm trying to please. I don't make me no Superman. That don't make me anybody great, okay? I'm just telling you. I've done God to a place in my life. Matter of fact, I've been there a long, long time, to be honest with you. All I care about is pleasing him who has called me to be a soldier. And that dark night so many years ago, that's exactly what he called me. He said, follow me and I'll make you a soldier. And I've been following him for 44 years now. Jesus said there's two ways to smuggle the light. You can hide it under a bushel or hide it under the bed. Bushel is a type of the world. A bed is the type of laziness. We've let worldly and spiritual laziness let the fires go out in our lives. It's gotten dark, and, and, and we take it hook, line, and sinker. We think going to church is just a production anymore. Going to church, you got to have the right kind of music, got to have the right kind of uh, production going on. And, man, if we can throw something on like Branson has, man, we can get more people to come to our church. There's a church I know of. It runs 500,000 people, probably 1,000 people. A city not far from here. And the preacher one morning got up and he preached against homosexuality. And they said 100 to 200 people got up and walked out on him. And everybody applauded that. Man, he, he preached, they walked out. But I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They would have never been coming if he had been preaching it all along the way. All of a sudden, he got a little courage, and I thank God he did. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that. Sometimes, as Barney Fife used to say, you got to nip it, nip it, nip it in the bud. Amen. 
got to preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, uh, whether they like it or whether they don't. Uh, if you got to trim around the root, preach it anyhow. If you got you're going to cut the limb out from underneath them, preach it anyhow. Uh, he said, preach the word, be faithful, be faithful to the word of God. Uh, and it's gotten dark, and, and we've just taken it. We believe it. Uh, I say it's time that we get back to the righteousness of God, because uh, see, righteousness fuels the fire that produces the light in the church. Uh, you break down that righteousness, and it gets dark in that church. Uh, and you sit there long enough, you get used to it. You think it's normal, uh, and you'll be contented with your spiritual life. Uh, I don't know about you, but something ought to be stirring you every day. Uh, something ought to be driving you every day to the altar uh, and saying, Lord, I want to get closer to God because uh, I realize one of these days I'm going to stand with these feet in looking at him, and he's going to look through me, uh, and I want to know that I know that I know that I'm right with God. Uh, I know I'm saved, but I want to be pleasing. Uh, I want to please him who called me to be a soldier. Uh, don't you get used to the dark. Don't allow things in your life just to keep accumulate. Get them out. Get them out. One time there was a man got down to pray in the altar, and he said, Lord, Lord. He said, would you just sweep out all the spiders in my life? Sweep them all out, Lord. Sweep the, sweep the webs out, Lord. Kept praying that little dear saint got up and walked over to him and got down beside him. And she started praying. And she said, Lord, don't sweep out the spiders in this man's life. Lord, kill the spider. Amen. And that's what you got to do. You got to kill the spider. You got to kill the sin. You got to quit looking at it as just normal. It's not normal. We're being bowled alive like a bunch of bullfrogs. And we think it's okay. It's not. We're going to wind up one day and it's all going to be over. And you look at our nation and we see where it's going. It's because we've sat there and allowed it to happen. It's time to stand up. It's time to preach the word. It's time to do what God called us to do and be a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Don't get used to the darkness in your own life. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I don't know what else.